Tonight's game was a must-win game. And the Capitals did just that. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and a welcome into this edition of Locked on Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holney. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any. Any winning $5 bet, that's $150 bucks. if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about a must-win game for the Capitals. And they did just that by picking up a huge victory, a huge two points over the Flyers, this could potentially change the outcome of this season and what the Capitals do at the trade deadline. We'll talk about that in the show a little bit later. We will talk about Noah Hannafin and how Jeff Merrick and Elliot Freeman were talking about that today on the Jeff Merrick podcast that the Capitals are kicking the tires on Noah Hannafin. What does that mean for the Capitals? And a little bit later, we will talk about does the win tonight change the Capitals' tactics at the deadline. But just to get it going here, wow. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. When I watched the first period, I was like, here we go. The Capitals are going to be all in on seller mode as they are going to lose this game of utmost importance. Now, the one thing I know for sure is that this team is very hard to read. You saw them taking down the Ottawa Senators, and you were riding high. Then you saw them face palm against the Red Wings and everyone's like, and myself, the season's over. And then won the game that meant the most, the game tonight against the Flyers, what did the Capitals do? They answered the bell when it mattered the most. And wow, what a, just a huge victory. This game had everything. It had great goal scoring. It had Alex Ovechkin scoring. And the biggest thing, or one of the best things for me to watch was Tom Wilson get into a fight with former Capital Garnet Hathaway. This had everything. They could have made a movie about the Capitals tonight or a miniseries anyway. And uh, it would have been some compelling television, suffice to say, but a huge win uh, in a game that the Capitals had to win. They did just that, picking up two huge points for a Capitals team that is fighting for their playoff lives by a score of 5-2. to two. Now, make no mistake about it, they're not out of the woods yet. I mean, they picked up two huge points And it was very important that they win the game tonight, and they did that. But by no means are they in it. I mean, they're not out of it. Like, make no mistake about it. If they would have lost tonight, you know, it's it's the common thought that they would have been donezo. But they did. They won. The Capitals were facing a two-goal deficit, and they did the improbable for this year's Caps team. They fought back and breathing life back into their playoff hopes, at least for this moment. And it was a big win. I don't want to, you know, undersell what this what this win means for the Capitals when they had to answer on the biggest stage in a game of utmost importance. They did just that. Two huge points against a team that is also kind of fighting for what they're going to be doing as well. This is a Flyers team that no one had high hopes for, you know, doing anything. This was supposed to be a team in rebuild. And this is a team with John Tortorella pushing the buttons as well. So uh, he is a fierce competitor. And uh, the one thing I will say that he has that Flyers team playing much better than I think anyone had 
thought they were going to do. Charlie Lindgren, beast mode, uh, made a 10-bell save, but left a rebound for the Flyers to score. So it was one of those, yes, Charlie Lindgren, but no, 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 no. Um, it was one of those moments where it, you were probably pretty vocal at home and like, seriously, did that just happen right now? But it did. Uh, but it, that was just, that was the beginning of the game. And after that, it was pretty smooth sailing for the Capitals. Goals from Ovechkin, Milano, Carlson, Mantha, and Strom. As the Capitals take down the Flyers 5-2, to two, Lindgren with 24 saves, Lapierre, Wilson, Patch, Reddy, and Strom with two assists. Power play has nine goals in eight games. Killing it. What else could we ask for? Uh, again, it's the pendulum that swings back and forth. Big win against Ottawa. Big loss against Detroit. Big win, you know, tonight. What is in store for the Capitals Sunday as they take on the Coyotes. Uh, I know that this is a Coyotes team that has been playing very poor as of late. Uh, don't want to fall into a trap game, but let's hope they can continue to keep stockpiling wins. The Caps almost appeared to be out of it in the first period. Then in the second period, your captain, my captain, Alex Ovechkin, grabbed the bull by the horns and drove home the puck with a great feed from Wilson with a face-off win by Hendricks Lapierre, who is absolutely destroying it. Uh, and I've heard things out there that he has kind of said that I want to stay on this big team. I don't want to go back to Hershey. I love Hershey. They have some great chocolate there, but my future is in DC uh, and he's making a case for himself. How would you, you know, envision ever sending Hendrick Slop here back down to Hershey at this point? Same thing goes for Scarbosa. Same for the guys that have made the most for, of their opportunities I think that, you know, Hendricks LaPierre is here to stay. Then in the second period, uh, things continued to go well. Ovechkin scored his 17th of the, of the year. Ovechkin now has points in 12 of his last 13 games and eight goals since returning from the All-Star break. We know what happened at the All-Star break. He found hockey again. He got the rest that he needed. He got a chance to spend time with his family in Dubai. And, you know, a, an entire NHL, you know, all the critics, all the talking heads, everyone that had written him off this season for just he's finally done. Father time has punched him square in the face. He's out. Not so fast. What happened at the All-Star break is he found his game and he's all in and being a huge contributor. Uh, and that should be a lesson to myself and to anyone else that dares to doubt the great eight. Uh, 839 career goals, needing just 56 more to break Wayne Gretzky's goal record. All of a sudden, it's seeming more and more feasible. Uh, the question is, is he going to be able to do it under his current contract? If he continues with this current trajectory, I would say yes. In the Capitals, and Alex Ovechkin grabbing that bull by the horns and scoring the goals, telling his team, this is a must win, guys. You get this, right? I'll show you how we do it. And he did just that. Uh, riding the wave of Ovechkin's momentum, Milano finds Twine and ties the game for the Caps. The ice was definitely tilted in the Capitals' favor at that point. Milano has three goals and points in four of his last five games. So he is quite the player that missed a couple months there with injury, coming back and making a name for himself. I was one of the guys that said we're going to need to see more from uh, Milano when he makes his return, and we have seen more from Sonny Milano as he has been killing it. John Carlson dominating with a wraparound goal, just a sweep goal at that point. The Capitals were sailing. It was just easy street for the Capitals. You saw a rattled Flyers team that was just trying to get the Capitals to, to get into a fight so they could go on the power play. But the Capitals, Beck Malenstein in particular, showed great restraint. Beck Malenstein is a big man and could wipe the ice with a lot of those guys out there. But he did the wise thing and oftentimes showing great restraint is more difficult than dropping the gloves against some of the big names in the NHL. Uh, Hendricks Lapierre getting rewarded for his efforts was playing on the top line. Two assists in his efforts tonight. Three goals in two assists in three games. Again, Lapierre making the most of his opportunity. He was one of the players that went to the Calder Cup as a boy and left as a man when the Hershey Bears won the Calder Cup. 
He walks around with swagger. He walks around with confidence. And what great way to reward Hendricks Lop here than to play with, you know, his childhood idol of Alex Ovechkin, a guy that he idolized so much that he even put gold colored laces in his skates. It's got to be one of those moments every day for Hendricks Lop here that I need to pinch myself. Is this really happening? Uh, Strom as well, who continues to dominate, had a three-point night, including a goal. Patch Ready now has points in four straight games. Wilson picked up two assists in the win. And uh, again, it was just all gravy for the Capitals uh, and Anthony Mantha in front of the net for his 19th of the season, making it difficult for the Capitals. And I'll talk about this in a later segment on what to do with some of these players at this point. Do you really want to trade Anthony Mantha when he is one of the biggest offensive contributors on this team? And I know what people are going to say. He's a UFA uh, in the off season. Uh, uh, what what are you going to do with him? Uh, so it, it, it it's uh, what I'm going to say about it is let's not worry about that right now. Let's worry about the Capitals winning games. And I know that the trade deadline is looming on March 8th, but unless the Capitals could get a tremendous return for Anthony Mantha, I don't see them moving him at least right now. Same goes for Charlie Lindgren, who was dominating out there, saving 21 of 23. Uh, so just all things considered, an amazing evening for the Capitals as they continue to keep rolling here. And again, it's a tough it's a tough team to kind of gauge where they're at at any given moment. They'll pick up a big win and then they'll lose a big game. But for right now, in this given moment, I'm pretty pumped as a Capitals fan as they just appeared just a dominant force out there. There was no real moment that I thought the Flyers were going to sneak back into the game. It was the most impressive performance by the Capitals. Uh, and as a Capitals fan, you should be very happy right now and uh, just really excited about what the potential is. They're not, they're not eliminated because that was the fear tonight is if they lose, it's over. The Capitals will stick a for sale sign outside Capital One Arena saying we will listen to offers on everyone. Uh, so a good position for the Capitals that maybe necessarily they might make moves at the trade deadline to help bolster this team. But they don't necessarily need to trade away everyone because at this moment right now, they're still in it. All right. So coming up here after the break, we will talk about an intriguing name, a premier defenseman in the National Hockey League, Noah Hannafin of the Calgary Flames. Jeff Merrick said that Jeff Merrick and Elliot Freeman said that the Capitals were kicking the tires on Noah Hannafin. What would that mean for the Caps? I'll discuss coming up. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. And let me tell you something, guys. Sometimes you're watching an NBA game, say it's a Wizards game, and they're not playing that great Open up the FanDuel app, put a little bit of money on the game. All of a sudden, the game is that much more exciting. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Locked on has launched first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and now it's also available on amazon fire tv and the free fire tv channels app locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today now available on the free fire tv channels app all right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So an intriguing name was mentioned today on the Jeff Merrick podcast as Elliot Friedman was his guest, and they were talking about Washington, and they were talking about Noah Hannafin and the possibility that he could be coming to the Capitals. What would that mean for the Capitals? An absolute game changer. Uh, that he would be one of the key pieces solidifying the Capitals' blue line 
for years to come. I'm talking Sandine. I'm talking Faravari. Add Noah Hanif into the mix. Things are looking pretty, pretty good for the Capitals blue line. But talking about the comments that were made today, there's been a lot of talk about the Capitals being sellers at the deadline. I've spoke about it on the show. So it caught me by surprise to hear Elliot Friedman talking on the Jeff Merrick show about the Capitals have been kicking the tires on Noah Hannafin. Again, we've heard sellers. Sellers, Charlie's going to be leaving. Uh, all these big names are going to be leaving. Mantha and Pacioretty and Abe Kubel, they're all going to be out of here but the Capitals as buyers, hmm, quite intriguing. The, fl the Flames, who are in the midst of a sell-off, still have big names left available. And one of those big, bigger names left on the team is Noah Hannafin. Now, the problem, however, is that Noah Hannafin is not going to come cheap. Uh, the Capitals will have to give up some key pieces. I'm talking draft picks, probably some NHL talent to facilitate that. Uh, Sportsnet Eric Francis said last week that Hannafin is sure to be the Flames at least a first-round pick, top prospect, and a roster player. So that is going to hit the Capitals rather hard if they want to get a player like Noah Hannafin. So uh, some people are going to go ahead and say, that's a lot to spend on a rental. My hunch is, is that they will offer him, uh, if there is a trade made, that they will immediately offer him, you know, an extension to his contract or make some kind of promise that we will take care of you this summer. I don't think that the Capitals would sell the farm in this case to get a player for just the next few months in the event that the Capitals still are quite a long shot for making it to the playoffs. But if they could get no Hannafin, and even if it hurts a little bit, they would have a premier defensive player for years to come who is hitting his stride at 27 years old. He would help fill out the Caps' future on the blue line on the left side. In the quote here, Friedman said, I think Washington sees the bigger picture. Where are they really? I think they recognize that they got to make some changes. I think they've seem like a lot of NHL teams. They don't want it to be a teardown. They want to see if they can kind of rebuild it on the fly. I think they're looking at some things out there. I think they're kind of kicking the tires on Hannafin. And, you know, some people would say, well, who cares? Who's Elliot Friedman? He is a premier insider. Just a huge talent for the Capitals if they could potentially uh, land him. Again, he logs heavy minutes at 27 years old. He's just hitting his stride and a huge dude as well, all things considered. Six foot three, 210 pounds. And like I said, just hitting his stride. He's not going to come in here and play on the third pairing or something like that. He'll come in here and take over. And the good thing about someone like Noah Hannafin, if they can land him, is that he will take care of the Capitals Capitals uh, for years to come. He figures to be a part of the future of the Capitals blue line. I'm talking here, Martin Faravari. I'm talking Rasmus Sandin. So he's going to fill a huge role for the Capitals. There is a lot to be excited about. Uh, and one of the things I'm going to go ahead and say here is that, you know, just because someone like Elliot Friedman said that it was going to happen, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is going to happen. But when you look at these premier insiders, I'm talking Elliot Friedman, I'm talking, you know, Darren Dreger and Frank Saravalli. These guys do this for a living. So chances are they heard something uh, either from an agent or another insider that it could potentially happen. Uh, career high 11 goals this season and has 34 total points through 59 games would be a huge thing. Hannafin is playing some of his best hockey and would no doubt be one of the crown jewels of the Capitals' blue line. So uh, again, that would be exciting. The things that I don't like about it is what the Capitals would have to give up. Uh, we've been down this road before, giving up some you know, draft picks and futures and roster players that if they in fact do go all in, I hope that uh, Noah Hannafin is everything that we had hoped for. Um, but what is one of the things that we know about this team is that it is making changes, whether they want to or not. They're making changes based on injury. We've seen, you know, the integration of Hendricks LaPierre. We've seen Connor McMichael take on a bigger role. Uh, Beck Malenstein. We've seen call-ups of Scarbosa and Pierre Dubé. That this team is trending in a direction, whether they want to or not, just based on necessity, based on Kuznetsov, based on Oshie, based on Backstrom. Those kind of things that, you know, the wheels of change 
are already in motion. And like I talked about, John Carlson, who is a key piece on the Capitals blue line. I mean, let's just be honest with you here. He is getting older as well, so they need to have their eyes on the present and the future. I think it would be a really huge thing uh, if Noah Hannafin figured into the Capitals' long-term plans. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will talk about what do the Capitals do now that they're winning games? Has their posture changed? Has their tactics Are their tactics going to change at the deadline? I'll discuss coming up. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat and their best price guarantee. Game, t- game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And one of the frustrating things for me is when my favorite band comes to town or my favorite com- the comedian or something of that nature comes and I'm trying to find tickets and I can't find them anywhere. I just take the frustration and and the confusion out of it with game time. It makes it that much easier. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So it was said that the game tonight against the Flyers was going to determine in which direction the Capitals go at the trade deadline. Are they going to be buyers and what are they going to be sellers and what degree of sellers will they be? I think that if the Capitals had lost tonight, I think you would have seen huge changes. I'm talking Mantha. I'm talking maybe Lindgren, even though I think they wait until Lindgren until the offseason, unless they just got a crazy offer. Uh, You know, Pacioretty, Abe Kubel, uh, those kind of players. I think that a lot more of the players would have been in flux, not to mention, um, you know, any other kind of assets, those kind of things. I think that the Capitals would have done something to try to get a long-term solution for a position. But now that the Capitals won tonight, I think it changes things. I don't think that you want to move out someone like Anthony Mantha now, considering that he's a key contributor. I most definitely don't think that you would move someone like Charlie Lindgren out at this juncture, considering the huge role that he's playing between the pipes. Um, And then if you want to widen the lens a little bit more, Max Pacioretty, I'm going to go ahead and cross his name off of it. Nicholas Abbey-Cubell, Maybe something like that. I guess stranger things have happened. So it's going to be interesting to see what players are ultimately on the move on the trade deadline. No, those are just the ones that come to mind, but there could always potentially be a player that we didn't think of. Uh, But I just think that the Capitals are not going to get as aggressive, shall we say, as I think that, you know, the the original plan was. And I think that, you know, they kind of gave it a hard deadline tonight just based on, where the Capitals were at. It would have been, you know, them overcoming great odds uh, in order for them to make it to the playoffs had they lost tonight. So a big thing, now they're four points behind Philly with two games in hand. Uh, So it stands to reason that, you know, again, I'm not going to say that they're going to make it now, but they're at least in the hunt. There's a chance. Are you telling me there's a chance? I'm telling you there's a chance that the Capitals could potentially make a push here and they could also make some key additions to this team. Noah Hannafin was one of the players I talked about in the previous segment. That's just off the top of my head, not to mention what kind of moves Brian McClellan has up his sleeves. I mean, I'm not in the cockpit of his mind. I don't know what he's thinking, but you know, potentially, especially if the Capitals won a couple games here now, say they take down uh, the Coyotes, for example, and say, you know, what else they got coming up down the road? They got the Blackhawks. Say they're able to pick up big wins in the, against those teams. Well, now it's really interesting uh, so that, you know, you take a look at uh, Brian McClellan and he might try to solidify things. He might try to really bulk things up a little bit here and let the Capitals give their, you know, their best chance on going on a run here. Uh, So uh, a a big win uh, for the Capitals tonight. It's going to be interesting to see what shakes out on March 8th, if not before, uh, that are the Capitals still going to be aggressive? Are they going to really go all in on 
you know, victory this year. I think they should. I mean, especially if they can win a, a few games, like I said here. I mean, we don't want to squander at the Alex Ovechkin era, right? I mean, we know we only have him under contract, at least his current contract here for a couple more years. It's best to make hay while the sun shines and do that with Alex Ovechkin. And we're going to do that with the guys like Alex Ovechkin leading the charge, like what he did, got the goal scoring going for the Capitals. Uh, let's go all in. And uh, if there is any moves to be made, and I know I'm going to hear a lot of things about it, like, no, we still got to get Mantha out of here. Really? With his goal scoring touch in the Capitals, you know, potentially in it, you want to move him out of here to get what? A, a, a draft pick? Uh, something of that nature? Um, so it is interesting not to mention Nick Dowd. Nick Dowd is another one of the key pieces. You know, he is one of the, the most sought after guys that I hear about in all of the NHL podcasts and NHL radio and in uh, in Canadian uh, NHL channels as well is Nick Dowd, Nick Dowd, Nick Dowd. How about Nick Dowd in Edmonton? How about Nick Dowd in Toronto? I've, I've heard a lot of different scenarios that there are all eyes on Nick Dowd. Has the posture, has the, you know, what the Capitals uh, position going to be on Nick Dowd changed that the Capitals are playing better now? You know, it's going to be interesting. Um, but I, as of right now, I wouldn't make any huge moves. Um, at, you know, at least, you know, the guys that are on the ice that are helping them win games. Otherwise, you are definitely pulling the lever and hitting the eject seat and saying, you know, we're done. You know, it's we're, we're waving the white flag on the season. So a big win for the Capitals tonight. Uh, and it's going to be, like I said, interesting to see how they proceed uh, for the rest of the season, and most notably, March 8th. Circle that one down. Take the day off of work, if you will. I've done it for years. Even before I did this podcast, I love this time of year uh, to see the chess match of this guy going here and that guy going there and what potentially the Capitals could do at the trade deadline. It gets me excited. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube, you are ultimately what makes this show successful. A bit of a note on this show is I lost internet halfway through the show, so it cut off and it rejoined. So if it doesn't perfectly splice in the middle, you'll have to excuse me as, you know, I, I'm at the at the mercy of the, of the internet at the end of the day. All right, so once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, and I'll talk to you again next time.